Oh, we need to figure this out. Yeah, let's give Jerry McInnes a call. Like the Jerry McInnes? He owns a part of Bassmaster. He's been on television for 40 years. It'll work. We need help. We have no idea. I hope he takes our call. Hey, this is Jerry. This is Thad and the uh, crew. Oh, how you doing? We got a situation where we got this opportunity to go fish for bass, and we don't know anything about uh-huh. bass fishing. We know that you know everything about bass fishing. We're going to Mexico for largemouth. Do you have any contacts down there? Actually, we were wondering if you want to go with us. If I want to go with you? <laughs> I don't even know you guys. Right? We're hooking up with a guy named Ron Speed Jr. When are you going down there, though? Oh, uh, about 13 days. Golly, guys, starting right in the middle of Bassmaster Classic, and I kind of got my hands full right now. There's a reason for me to live. This is the moment. Four-wheel drive, mud, chainsaw, shotguns, fishing. That's expedition. Chris Owen's brain was taken apart. There's parts missing. Screws aren't there. He's lost. Have you ever been sprayed in the face with bear mace? Seven times. When I have my life in his hands, I'm scared. Out fishing with the drug cartel. Bad. In Salt Lake City, Utah. Guy that can really cut loose sometimes. But also really worry about what's going down. I'm a little apprehensive. I'm a little nervous. It's good to be cautious. Oh, yeah, That's serious. I want to come home in one piece. <laughs> Brian. He's like the MacGyver on the trip. He's the kind of guy you want in a foxhole organizing the ammo. He's a researching machine, okay? He's got all the latest GPS, satellite, map technology. I'm not kidding you. That guy is Jerry Rick. So much stuff. We're not going to pretend to be pro bass fishermen. Um, we actually really don't know what we're doing half the time. But we're doing it anyway. So I'm under the tree. No motor, you look at it. Let me grab the motor. Hey, Bert. Hey, 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 hey. I'm trying to get me under a log. Oh, ow. Go, 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 go. That's what I'm talking about. This is our second attempt at trying to catch bass here in Mexico. It didn't turn out to be too friendly. It was in the heat of the drug war. I mean, it was full blast. I flagged down a policeman all of a sudden. I think we just dug ourselves into a deeper hole. So we just got totally hijacked. We got robbed and pretty much hit the fan. You know, passports were stolen. He pulled a knife out of his jeans and we hear gunshots. On the first trip down to Mexico, we made a lot of mistakes. And when it was all said and done, we managed to catch a few bass. But we had a lot of questions and a lot of things still to learn about bass fishing. So we headed to the best place that we thought we could find those answers. Birmingham, Alabama. Here we are, Birmingham, Alabama. And we just walked into the world of bass. It's crazy. These people are really into it. This is the opening of the Bass Master Classic. This takes fishing to a whole nother level that I didn't even know existed. Just trying to grab somebody here that looks like they know what they're doing. We're asking them a thing or two about bass fishing. What's your most effective method of fishing? You've probably never heard of it. It's called a drop shot. One thing that's great about these is they have a self-tuning line tie. And they have rattles in them too. We know absolutely nothing about bass. We're fly fishermen. This is a way to catch some fish. Usually the sneak attack is good on drop shots and also when you use umbrella rigs. So that's Arkansas, right? Or that's Alabama Rig. AKA Alabama Rig. We're trying to get somebody to give us something that'll help us crack this code. What about flash? Do they like flashy stuff? And bass love action. How do I apply that to fly fishing? We have no idea what we're doing about bass. How often do you guys use a, a woolly bugger? I don't use a woolly bugger. I don't even know what a woolly bugger is. You guys never use woolly buggers? Some people might, but I don't. I gotta, I gotta step back and think about that for a second. All your bass fishing experience. Would you say that fly fishing is probably the worst way to catch a bass? Well, I'll be honest with you. Aside from sitting at home on the couch, not the most effective way to catch a bass. Yeah, it'd be hard. You hear that? We're coming well, after yeah. you. We're coming after you. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Come and get it. <laughs> 
a mission. We're on a mission. On this trip back to Mexico, our mission is to catch big bass. But before we do that, we needed to hone in our bass fishing skills. So we headed towards one of Mexico's newest bass fisheries, Lake Picachos. This is a four-year-old reservoir, so the bass haven't had an opportunity to grow to the size that they will, but it has provided an opportunity for the young of the bass to just spread prolifically, and they're everywhere. This lake is the place to go if you want to catch a ton of bass. One of the coolest things about Ron's operation is that he hires all the local help, and coincidentally, a lot of the guys, this is their first time running a boat. They're learning how to do all this stuff. A uh, month ago, they don't even know how to start a motor. About a month ago, apparently, they hadn't even started a motor before. Uh, they didn't understand the water a whole bunch. But uh, we don't really know what we're doing. It's going to be a new thing for all of us. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know anything about bass fishing. We're the first fly fishermen on this lake, supposedly. Que hombre. Oh, yeah. What's up? The way the population has just bloomed since they dumped these fish in here four years ago is absolutely unbelievable. When you come out here to a place where you can catch, you know, 40 or 50 fish, you know, that's a good time. 50 fish days on a fly rod, that's not a bad day. I learned more about bass in the last two days than I've learned in my whole life, uh, which is easy to do. How'd the bass get here? It was brought by the government so the population around the lakes can use them. What happens is they block a river, makes a huge reservoir. So we're pulling up to the dam. Holy smokes, it's deep. Like the dam is right there. Made a massive, massive dam. Plant forage fish like shad or tilapia, or that provides food for the bass of this area. Apparently it's pretty huge. We just want to take a peek off the other side and straight down about 600 feet. <laughs> Holy. That's a river down there. So Jay's going to get up on the top of the concrete there. The guy that's most afraid of heights. Exactly. There's no way you'd get this close to the dam in the States. It's crazy. The bass here put on two pounds a year. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to catch a damn bass. <laughs> what do you think this did to the valley? This place is pretty crazy. This reservoir was made by flooding out the valley. I think we just hit a rooftop. I think, I think we just went over a rooftop. This used to be the village. When they put the dam in here, they flooded the entire village out, so everybody had to relocate. They take everybody in the village, and they just keep moving them up the mountain. But when the water comes up for the reservoir, it's going to flood everything, including the grave site. We're going to be fishing over top of people's homes. What do you got there, a gravestone? Evidently hooked a gravestone in the village. Sometimes you hook them and then you feel a little different about it. How many points for cemetery bass? Fifteen. Jay's plan is to catch the biggest, nastiest bass out of the cemetery. I think he might be onto something. <laughs> We're gonna try to catch a bass out of a room in one of these houses. That's cool. Ooh, got it. Been hanging out with Uncle Ned. <laughs> Uncle Uncle Raul. Cemetery bass. Cemetery bass. Some relatives are in the spa. All family. Is it disrespectful? No. Is it it's okay? No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I mean. That's a little sketchy. Yeah, weird spot to hang out, you know. I feel like we did what we needed to do here, and that's catch incredible amounts of bass in a very short amount of time. Now we're kind of starting to feel the big bass itch. So we're gonna head to probably the most famous big bass lake in Mexico, El Salto. All sorts of monster fish. And head out that way and see the difference between a brand new bass lake and something that's been going on for a long time. What's up? We here. We made it. Cape del Salto, land of the big bass. Oh, I got our arsenal right here. They're all fly rods, as you can see. That's how we fish. Lake El Salto, quite possibly the greatest bass fishery on planet Earth. I mean, a world record could come at any cast. I mean, that's why we're here. This is the best opportunity we have. Catch a big, big bass. Just, did you see? Oh. Oh. Came and hit it twice. He set the hook like a little girl. It's been harder than I would think. Got a lot to learn. Oh, that's a horrible cast. Horrible cast. Come on. Oh. Damn. 
felt real. <laughs> it felt so real. I just got wrapped. We've been fishing hard all morning. Long. Oh my. Oh, it's been brutal. A few small ones about that big. It's our only chance for me and Chris to get a big fish. That's a new record. I'm not starting out too good today. <laughs> oh, that was a big <laughs> fish, man. That was a big one, huh? And huge thing. So we got some spunk in him. What up? Uh, oh. Oh. oh, dang, lots of good fish. She wrapped me on a tree. Getting our asses kicked. We're learning a lot. Totally foreign. It's completely different than what I'm used to. You know, we end up in crazy spots across the world. We approach all of them the same. Everywhere we go, we have no idea what we're going to catch and no idea how we're going to catch it. But we always find a way. This is what we specialize in, is catching fish all around the world, whatever they are, wherever they are. Long arming. <laughs> we wanted to go to bass school, and now we're in the thick of it. It's either learn or burn. So what could be so hard about chasing down these giant largemouth bass? It's time to put our brains to the test and do some fly tying. We're new to this, so we gotta figure out the game that's going on in this lake. I'm trying to figure out what kind of fly to tie for the biggest bass that I've ever caught in my entire life. What's that fly gonna be, folks? I am trying to tie the biggest profile fly that I can find that I can still cast. I'm not really sure. It's gonna be kind of experimental on this round. Busting up a super long flash tail minnow right now. I have to catch the biggest bass that a fly rod's ever caught. I feel a lot better about life, and I feel a lot better about my day and my job. What is that gonna take? It's gonna have to take the greatest fly ever tied for a bass. Is that the Johnson spinner? Yeah. I think it's gonna happen. Today's our last day here. Yeah, it's now or never. This little Christmas ornament here I put on a hook last night. <laughs> I'll hold it down low before we get lapped off the boat launch today. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt some fish today with my Christmas tree ornament. Taking them down. We're not gonna catch as many fish as there's other clients down here throwing those lizards. I mean, we just can't. We, you know, we got a handicap, which is really tough to figure out. We're trying to get a fly down deep, which is where these fish are. Changing the game. The food of choice, tilapia. I think I got the colors right on that fly. Oh man. Yeah. Finally getting on the board a little bit. Let's do fight, man. I'll tell you. Rush. Finally. It's like ringing the dinner bell. Oh man. This fly has caught more freaking fish, man. Oh. It got bigger. Bigger. They put so much more heat on than those smaller fish. Definitely worked hard for that fish. Figured it out a little. I don't feel like a total rookie anymore. Yeah. It was nice to catch that fish. Next one's gonna be twice as big. Pulling out a few bass here and there, and they're all eating this nasty topwater foam thing that I tied up. Yeah, he came up and crushed that thing. Biggest bass I've ever seen by <laughs> far, dude. Yeah, that just made my day right there. I'm making some sense out of this lake. <laughs> <laughs> by far the biggest bass I've ever caught. Yeah! Finally, I think we're figuring it out. That's the closest I've ever been to a bass at <laughs> This is what we came here for. I mean, this is it. This is the day that counts, you know? Another okay. trip was a success to me. I mean, it's fun. Who doesn't want to come down to Mexico and fish for bass? You know what I'm saying? Should have been paying attention. <laughs> 